in less than five days they got a course hit. And this hit to a level three sex offender, Michael Bazanowitz. So um, we were able to make an arrest on that. We made a conviction. Uh, it was a great case. It was, uh, uh, it was good for the lab. Uh, it was just, when I think CODIS hits, that's the case I think of. It could have taken much longer, uh, if ever. He was a level sex, level three sex offender um, that uh, was not registered in the city of Wuhan where uh, he had uh, been seeing his girlfriend uh, in that area. So uh, we didn't have a lot to work on. Yes, it's, it's really a percentage game. Uh, if you look at the states that have much larger databases, their ratio of hits are, are much higher. Um, and as our database grows, we, we see a, a, a cumulative growth in that, in the number of samples. And uh, Adam Walsh, uh, the, the act that the, uh, the feds passed will only enhance that. The major just mentioned the, the sex offenders. We have found uh, through some initial queries that up, upwards of 60% of registered sex offenders in Massachusetts are not in CODIS, um, mainly because uh, the uh, sex offender registry law predated CODIS. Uh, Adam Walsh is going to require that all registered sex offenders um, be in CODIS, so we can expect uh, an influx of uh, offenders uh, in compliance with that uh, statute. On any given week, we, we are out at, at six to ten uh, locations with our technicians uh, collecting uh, literally 100 to 200 offenders a week. Um, you know, and that's personal contact. It, it, it's, it's, it's manual hours that it requires us to data entry them, so to speak, verify their identity, collect the sample, and then to bring it back here and data entry that back into the database. So we've been very lucky through uh, uh, you know, the support of EOPS to hire full-time technicians. That has increased our capacity. We're working very closely with uh, probation and corrections to make sure that people aren't slipping through the cracks. Uh, it's just a number we've never been able to get a grasp of, of who we should be collecting. So we're working with, um, uh, with Kurt Wood now to, to close some of the gaps with mass trial courts and also with probation um, to get a better grasp of, of uh, who we should be identifying, and that'll only enhance us. Um, but Day to day, uh, I think we have a very good structure here, and uh, I think that's evident by the number of hits we're getting, the quality of the, the science that's done here at the lab. Uh, we haven't sent out samples uh, in upwards of two years because our capacity here has been allowed us to analyze those samples ourselves in-house, and that's been through the, the work of the major to get the, the resources to do that, so we get a much quicker turnaround time. Um, and uh, in fact, we have a, a very, uh, relatively speaking, a very small backlog uh, of offender samples to go into the system, where some states have thousands and thousands. We, we, we're not real time, but we're only six to nine months behind on our samples. And that really isn't behind if you, if you look at kind of the industry standard out there. Um, so we're, we're very uh, fresh with, with our samples. But he has a past felony, even if they're um, you know, arrested and incarcerated for a misdemeanor today, we can go back in time and collect that person because they, of that past felony conviction. So it's, um, in 2004, as the major said, we were allowed to get convictions of felonies. That's not present. You don't have to be convic convicted from this time forward of a felony. It can exist in your past, and we're allowed to go back if you re-offend and are convicted. Now, these actually contain the personal data. As this would be the a major component of that blood card kit um, in that we have the info card and then the blood card. This is the other portion of it. This has all the identifying information on it. That's the person's name, their date of birth. It could have, uh, again, their fingerprint uh, is on it. It has uh, the facility where we collected that person, um, the probation officer, uh, et cetera. In any event, this is kept uh, separately, but it is linked uh, by that kit number, so the same kit number that exists on the blood card links uh, to, uh, to one of these 80,000 records that we have here. Uh, we do have a call lab <laughs> into, uh, built into CCIU. Um, we, 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 we do our own work here. We don't have to send it out. Um, it allows our staff to punch it to um, ease the burden on, on the DNA unit so they can focus on um, developing profiles, which is where the level of expertise is. Then this is the contents um, of the kit. Comes with instructions, a band-aid, um, specimen bag to put it back into. So, so somebody needed, uh, they always follow along on the instructions. Um, gauze, the lancet, the lance. Uh, and this is this is the blood card. And as you can see, uh, again, the kit number lines up with everything else, 71718. 
Um, what we're capturing is the race, the subject's sex, the name of the blood card collector, the signature of the collector, the date the sample was collected and the time, and then who took the thumbprint with a date and time. So we've collected the thumbprint in two different locations, simul basically simultaneously. A, you know, a, a hit is a uh, kind of a, a probative uh, value of evidence that we turn over to our, to our partner law enforcement agencies that might not result in an arrest, but it certainly gleans information into that investigation so it can be just as fruitful to the investigators, and we're well aware of that. You know, uh, uh, all hits are per se are not, not equal in the sense that uh, somebody's going to be arrested and ultimately convicted, but it, it may clear an individual. Uh, the very, it, it could be non-probative in value, so it, it just gives a probative value or a piece of evidence to the investigator in that particular case. It's a continually improving process to it, where before you know you might not uh, have the uh, technology to to get touch DNA, where now we do. So uh, upstairs uh, we're getting more and more requests, and uh, as you know, our resources.